Like off market stuff, we're just going direct to seller. Honestly, now for multifamily is a better time than ever. Obviously, single family too, but like people are seeing their values wiped out. And God was telling them, like, I was talking to a broker the other day, the seller had an eight million dollar warehouse in Durham, right? And because rates have gone up, cap well, the basically the value went from eight million bucks to six point two million. This is in six months. The guy had an offer for eight million dollars for a warehouse. Now, now he's like around six million. He literally lost two million bucks. So people are seeing that, and smart guys are selling and they're doing something. If they're ever a seller, like they know that they're about to hit a period of time, or it's going to be a couple of years until they can actually recapture some money. So now, now is a good time. I want to like correct that people's mindset in that. I mean, I'm not. I'm just going to run through. St basically, my point. I don't want to bore all the stats, but multifamily metrics are still good. We had just like single family. Multifamily went up a lot, but rents are still high and we're still solid. We still have a 5% vacancy. Uh, rents have gone up, I think it was 18, where is it right Vacancy is still low. But class A and B rose more than 15% in 21. So if you had $1,000 rents, you're, you're 150 bucks. If you had $2,000 rent for 2300 My brother's renting an apartment in downtown Raleigh on Glenwood for $2,800 a month. So it's a one bed. Or it's, it's just, like, it's stupid. I mean, there's, and there's stuff in there that's like $5,000 a month. Rent. It's like rent here is solid. And what happens to the person when the rates go to 7% that was going to buy a house? What are they? They're now renting. So now you have a demand and it's kind of. Like, uh, if you guys look at the stuff during COVID, when COVID hit, B-class and C-class multifamily was, was right there. It did not tick a bit. It didn't go up. Or, I mean, it was it was solid. So, it's, um, this, I mean, it doesn't really matter as much. Basically, Raleigh's kind of positioned in the middle of, like, market-wise, nationwide, to where we don't have a lot of supply coming in, and rents are still going to go up. That's kind of the reason I'm sure you, uh, Charlotte's got a little more coming in. But... So my intention, I was like, all right, what's the point of me talking? My intention is that if you're looking at a deal, you can look at it in like three seconds and figure out if it's a deal. So the reason, the reason I'm doing that is because like, so I work with all, in an office with some guys that are like on a broker, and they cold call all day, and they get these, these guys bringing in leads of random stuff. Hey, I got this warehouse. Okay, it's 12,000 square feet, blah, blah, blah. Like, hey, what should we offer? Okay. You know, instead of spending 30 minutes, an hour evaluating it, like how can you spit out offers really quickly and know? Because I think the the re biggest reason that people don't get into multifamily or commercial or anything is because they don't understand it. Like it's a block. It's like, oh shit, this is complicated. What the, like, it's, uh, and they just like stop. So what I want to do is like break these down like super simple in two seconds and be able to show you. Um, marketing is the same way. I'm going to kind of just... I can go, I'll go to the side of which I mean, basically it's the same stuff. Um, one of the apps that if you're, if you want to look for things, that's good. It's really good. It's got, is Reonomy. If anybody's like, wants to just like go in an area and search, like I found, we would find a 40 unit with Reonomy. We just basically went on there and they have criteria of things that are aged and their loans are older and they're, they're, they're time to refi, just things like that. And you can see metrics and stuff. Um, that's a great thing if you guys want to use that. Uh, Land Glide. Does everybody have Land Glide? It's the best thing since pork fried rice. I'm All telling you. you know. It's awesome. You can literally be driving down the road and, you, and it, geo, it geos you and it tells you where we are and you can pull up the tax card for that thing. So like right now, so it'll, it'll like pull up the tax card for this building and tell you who owns it, what it is, and you can send it to yourself and keep track of it. It's a really easy way to just like, because I've been, literally, I bought an 80 unit off of Anglai. I drove by, I'm like, what the hell, that looks good. It's ran down with buildings. We looked it up, sent it to my guys, and we called the owner, and, and then we ended up getting under contract. So it's like, a lot of this stuff, like you was literally just drive down the road. I mean, I know it's a very simple way of doing it, but it is a way to get deals. Um, and then like direct a broker, calling around and just, I won't get into all that. I mean, we can, if y'all have questions about marketing, we can get into it. I, my, my main intention is I want to show you how to like evaluate stuff. So, super simple. Without getting like into the weeds. Say someone brings you a multifamily deal, 
just run it with a 35% expense ratio and a 5% vacancy. It's like not rocket science. Like literally you can take out your phone in two seconds, look at it. Cause mo most stuff without getting into it. Cause the point of this is like when I, when I look at this, like we're, we're getting leads come in. This guy's got a, let's say a 30 unit and he wants, I don't know, he, he wants 3 million bucks. Okay, well what's it running for? Okay, all right, so then you go through it and you, you can plug in your phone in two seconds and pull it up. So it's like, um, so 35% expenses for less than 30 unit, 40 units and then 40% for a little higher. Why is it higher on over 40? Because you got, like I have an 80 unit Andrew, it's got two on-site people and their payrolls are about a 90 grand a year for those two people. And that, and that's so it's like a little bit higher because when you get to, that's the stress for 60, but like you, you get just the bigger it is, the more expensive you get. So you can just literally do the math on it. Um, and then obviously warehouses. Does everyone know what a triple net is in here? A triple net lease. So if you don't, basically the tenant pays all the expenses. So they, if there's taxes and insurance, they reimburse at the end of the year. So I want everyone in this room to tell me how much this property is worth. It's not that hard, guys. You can do it. All right, so I bought it for 550 off MLS, renovated everything, blah, blah, blah. It's all rented for a thousand bucks a door, okay? So everybody take out their handy dandy cell phone, right? All right, so we got all the rents are eight units, at $1,000 a unit, right? So we got $8,000 a month in revenue, right? So, and now we just take it for the entire year, it's 12. So we got pretty much $96,000. That's the annual revenue on it, right? And then you got 5% for vacancy and 35% for expenses. So in the, this total would be like 40%. The other way of doing that would just be multiply it times 0. 0.6. 96,000 times 0. 0.6 is 57,000. Does everybody get that? And then what you do is divide it by the cap rate. Cap rate, I would just type in, right? If, you know, we were talking earlier, he's an appraiser. And you know, six months ago, that number might have been five and a half. Now it's closer to seven. If you just want to like, Throw something out, you can say so, and then divide it by 0 0.06. Because six is the cap rate. So did everybody get that? Does everybody see how I got that? Got so you just take the NOI, whatever's left over, and then just divide it by 0 0.06. So it's worth just shy of a million? Yeah. So what was that renting for before? Oh, like four or five bucks. Okay, so you doubled, you doubled the rent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we just basically renovated. You're just you're just forcing value. Yeah. So I mean, it was all 20 year tenants. And some people were like 250. You know, it's like it's crazy. Uh, really bad shape, new structural work, whatever. So just renovated everything. My point is, the reason I'm telling you that the, the, the deal doesn't matter, but it was on MLS, mm -hmm. and literally went on MLS that night, and I went like 75 hard, and I saw it I was like, oh my god, it's a fucking deal. I was like freaking out. So I called and like we put an offer in like bought it quickly. Why? Because I freaking did that math on my phone. I'm like, all right, if I put a, if this thing needs everything, it's called 150 grand. It's still worth a million bucks. So I, that's why I like I put in an offer. Boom, seventy five thousand dollars hard. Like even if I got to rebuild it, there's still three hundred grand in equity because I was able to find it quickly on my phone. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, my intention is you say, okay, wow, that's a deal, and look at it and be able to act quickly because sometimes you don't have time to wait. Like there are other people, they have, there's like three or four other offers right after me and they just like, God, so, do you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. It's like, okay, you want to be able to do it quick. Yeah. So. Is that because you have a search already set up, Chris? See, so you can get set up with the feed. That can do my search feed. So there's a bunch of, who's a realtor in this room? There you go. So if you want to get set up in the feed, I have a multifamily feed and everything that comes on multifamily, you'll like on MLS will go straight to you instantly. You can set it up. So this came to me instantly on multifamily feed. Boom, saw it. As soon as it hit the market, oh, it, oh wow. Uh -huh. Okay, it's a deal. Let's put an offer in. Yeah, I remember you telling me you had the 75,000 to build. Yeah, I mean that, I crap. But 
Well, I mean, it may, it may it work. Yeah. But at the other at the other time, like, why is there hesitation? Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because seventy five thousand dollars is a lot of money, but it's worth a million bucks. Right. right. If I got to rebuild the entire thing, like, it, it makes sense. So that's what I'm trying to give you is the mental tool to like, okay, cool, let's act quick, because you know, and sometimes, and you can always dig and get deeper. But yeah, it actually appraised for a million fifty because the expenses were a lot less. But anyway, so does this one kind of make sense? Yeah. Do you have any questions on that? Okay. Well, what's your exit strategy here? Are you gonna keep it, run it. To keep it, or are you gonna yeah. resell it? I, mean, I just got. I just refied it. Keep it. It's in Durham, good area. Rents are probably like twelve hundred now. When you you make it into this more financing wise, are you using kind of the same sort of yeah, private right. money? Normal burr. Hard money. What's that? Just, so banks will love love this. Super clean. Okay. Brand new, renovate it and stabilize, and you bring it back to them, and they give you pretty good terms on it. So, I mean, that, <clears throat> it was a different conversation six months ago. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just, if you have something that's going to completely renovate and stabilize, you bring it back to a bank, even though you just bought it. There's plenty of banks that don't care what you just bought it for and put into it. Yeah. Like they'll, be, you can still cash out and get more. Like right now, you, I could probably get maybe seven fifty against it. Although maybe I'm into it for less. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like in some some of what I do, I work with larger GC, you know, larger developers, and their their whole plan is to go get get it stabilized and then sell it off to like a larger property manager. I imagine if you're working with a bigger property, that's kind of a yeah. It's the same thing, just bigger. Yeah. But they're also putting new construction, yeah. and that's their model. They're gonna fill it. They're gonna sell it to some hedge fund for like a three cap and right, exactly. three hundred grand a door. That's a that's a completely different. He's laughing. But to call what you're saying out, like this works exactly if you taught yeah. it 10 times these numbers. You yeah. Can yeah, I'm just wondering. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm going to show you the 80 unit here in a little bit. It's kind of it just this is the same thing. I mean, people do this with 300 units. They let it build them for like 25 million and sell them for like 45 million. It's nuts. I mean, they're into it for like 150 a door, 100, you know, 150, 170. Is that kind of like new build costs right now? I mean, so he's an appraiser. That's why I keep asking. But like, you know, you're just like, I think like 150 to 170 a door and they're trading for like 250 to 300. You know, again, now things are different, but like, yeah. These are just pictures, renovation pictures. I don't, um, after, cause we pretty much did it all. Um, simple stuff, renovated out, paint floors, LVP, new cabinets, great. Kind of like all the normal stuff. I don't, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. Uh, Okay, so we got that. Okay, so I got another one. Everybody in the room, tell me how much it's worth. All right? Uh, it's, it's basically in downtown Raleigh. Single owner, have owned it for 30 years. He has people in there paying like 200 bucks a month. I mean, the thing was falling. It needed, I think I, we did a $600,000 reno on it. Um, but they're all one beds, super small units, literally, you know, basically two tape, like, you know, to the, to the second row here. They're like, they're thinking they're 400 square feet. Um, but they're all, you know, we end up basically renovating the entire thing, getting everybody out. Funny story about this is we, uh, we gave everybody notice and the city of Raleigh, uh, some of the tenants got mad and called the news on us. And the city of Raleigh, the mayor, some housing authority. Oh yeah. The great thing about it is they said that Trademark Properties, the management company, owned it, not me. That was good. So they called them and not me. So, but yeah, I mean, and so we ended up basically emptying the entire thing out because it was so under market and these things were so damaged that we had just to do the entire thing because it was all the entire exteriors, interiors, everything. Um, Oh shit, I have pictures on one time. So that's what that's it before. This is right right in downtown Raleigh off Garner Road. And honestly, I was in 21 where things were still kind of changing. Right now there's a bunch of brand new townhouses and new construction on Garner Road. It was still, you know, I, I <coughs> carried my gun on me when I went there at night. Put it like that. Uh, you know, just small units. Just very simple. Um and so basically just renovated everything, uh, gutted it all. So here it is here, and this is when it's done. Um, I think I ended up going, 
I don't know, it was 600 grand all in, like call it 150, 200 exteriors and the rest was interiors. But they're super small units, um, 500 square foot, and we, they get a thousand. No, I don't have them on the internet, yeah, that's why. Um, all right, so how much is it worth? I can show you the pictures, but how much is it worth? Right? Three million? No, 32 units at a thousand dollars a month while well, I connect to my internet here. Uh, Go back to the uh, slide. Just let me. Because it said you didn't raise rents. Yeah. Yeah, I only saw five of them. It said you didn't raise rents. So, sorry. Upon completion. There you go. That's, uh, upon completion, it's a thousand dollars a unit. Six point four. Yeah, I mean you're right there. So we bought it for two point six seven five, put six hundred grand into it. You're all in for like, call it three, three three, um, and it took about it took two months to get them out, four months. Four to five months to renovate and about a month to lease it out because this was during like to be a really good time like right at the end of last year where things were kind of still crazy so at least like that we leased the entire complex in like a month and a half so it was fully leased so it's bringing thirty two thousand dollars a month does everybody know this thing is worth you guys gotta know this stuff all right 32 grand huh three million eight forty uh thirty two thousand is the monthly revenue times 12, right? Yep. So you got 384 is free in a year. 5% vacancy and 35% expenses, so times 0. 0.6. Why did that happen? Uh, so the, the, nut, the NOI is 230. And then divide it at that time, when I did the appraisal, it was 5.5%. So divided by 5.5, I did something wrong because it actually appraised for 5.3, but um, I don't know what I did wrong there. I think the revenue was a little bit higher. So, uh, no, they, oh, so they actually underwrite the expenses lower. In this situation, they ran it at like a 30% expense ratio. So um, it was lower, but long story short, it appraised for 5.3, the way, the way they appraised it. So then you go back to the bank, refinance it, and they were able to give me 3.3 .3 loan at 3.125% interest rate. So now you're all in, you're all in at, this is this was, this was a good time, 3.125, and then you can still cash flow about 15 grand a month or whatever, like roughly, you know. So I, I'm trying to like show you that. Cause like, so we did, when we got, when we got this guy on the phone, we called him, he's like, yeah, I got off it for 2.5. I'm like, dude, what? I'm like doing math on my phone. I'm like, this thing's worth, this is a freaking steal. Like, I'm like, dude, offer them 2.675. Tell them we'll give them money tomorrow. Like, let's go hard. Because what I'm saying is if you can learn how to do this quickly, like, you know when there's a deal and you don't have to waste time. Because what a lot of people do is they'll go in there and they'll just, they'll, they'll be like, oh, well, let me think about it for two weeks. Like, these people are like going, I'm telling you, like, they're, they're not waiting around. So, does everybody understand how that worked? What questions do you have? Cap rate, how do you know with a seven and a half cap rate, it would work a lot less? Yes, correct. Between six and seven and a half, you got a big difference, right? Do you want to answer that question? The market does. The market. Who's the market? I hear this all the time. That's where the market is. 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 For apartments, between seven and a half, I agree. And that makes it worth 830. So they valued this and this. Valuations are a lot different in the last six months. So you, I'm, I'm probably at seven right now. This was like when things were nuts, like everything was on fire. So I, five and a half was actually pretty normal at that time. And that's what recent comps for stuff in downtown Raleigh had sold for. So they used those comps at a five and a half cap. So that's something you're, you know, you have to argue with the appraiser about. Well, if you sold it, if you bought it at two and a half and then uh, your rent was so much it backs into the cap rate thing. So I bought it completely off pro forma. I bought it with the intention of emptying it out and renovating it, knowing I'm going to turn the entire thing and stabilize it. So I didn't, I didn't even look at it what it was going in as a cap rate, because I knew it was all like literally needed a full cut. So it's like not existent. It was just, yeah. So the appraisal actually came in. At, so back to your point, when I bought it, the appraisal came in at 2.3, as is. 
and the bank was like, I'm only gonna lend 75% of 2.3. So I had to go max out some credit lines and pay the difference. But I knew in the end, it when I'm done with it, it'll be worth it. So I had to, I had to float that for six months until I refied it. See what I'm saying? But, but I knew like, hey, this is in downtown Raleigh. You can't get anything in downtown Raleigh for a thousand bucks a month that's decent. Nothing. Like, like I mean, if, if, if there's anything less than a thousand bucks, it really falls like there's holes in the wall. So, yeah. That kind of answer your question. Then it was different. So, yeah. How do you quickly analyze something like that? Um, how do you know it's a deal? Like, do you look at the cap for you? What exactly do you look at? I think I'm missing. So this is, okay, so here's what I have under contract now. We can do it with this one. All right, I had a, I had a broker, this is in downtown Durham, and I'm gonna like kind of show you, hey, why is this a deal? So it's 44 units and it's in Durham, kind of to the right near, uh, yeah, whatever, Durham. So uh, basically two bed, one bath, 850 square feet. Um, so how's, how do I know this deal? All right, so you go to a website, there's one called Rentometer, or you just know, basically you just look at comps. Okay, so this one, I looked it up. I'm like, I just know Durham. You're not gonna get any less than, a, for a renovated two bed, 1,300 bucks, like 1,250. There's some renting for 1,400, 1,500 in apartment complexes. So it's like going back to what I said, like the broker calls me, he's like, hey man, this just fell out of contract. Do you want it? I'm like, whoa, okay. All right, so this is it. So I just did. I mean, you tell me what it's worth. How many doors is it? So it's 44. Right? At 1,300 bucks. So 44 times 1,300. Right? You should have 57 to a month. Times 12. Times 12, right? So let's just, to be conservative, type in 0. 0.6, which is going to be 5% for vacancy and 35% for expenses. So 0. 0.6, so your NOI is 411. If you want to be conservative right now, divide it by 0. 0.07. So that's so it's worth 5.8. At market rent after a tree half. So he called me and said, hey, it's 4.1. You want it? I'm like, oh, yeah, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, because I figure it's gonna be similar to the other one. Like it'll probably need, I think on my CapEx budget was like 600 grand for it. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna literally do everything. I'm gonna get everybody out and it's gonna be brand new and I'm done. So I'm just gonna refi it. I just wanna do it once we're done with it. But well, my, my point is that when you get that phone call, you can act quickly and you know. Because some people will sit on stuff and like deals don't last. Like that like that deal, he would've just called the next guy and it was gone. So it's like being able to identify it quickly and do that. So I'm gonna, you know, yeah. How do you decide what category that you use? Right now you're using points. Seven, I, I, Right now, plug like six and a half, seven. I mean. Back in the days, you used to use 10. Like, so, no, like it used to be more compressed. So, the lower the. So, cap rate is basically. What's the easiest way to explain it? Like, basically, what your net is on the property. So. That's NOI. You, if you pay cash for a house, it's what your return exactly. would be in one year. Yeah. Okay. So, if your free cash flow on a house after <laughs> everything was. You paid a hundred grand for it, and it was six thousand dollars. Six thousand divided by a hundred is six percent, and that's your cap rate. Does that make sense? Yeah. Chris, for this, you got six hundred grand times uh, divided by forty-four units, so you could factor in like under fourteen grand a unit. Does that factor any cap ex expenses? Are you just redoing the units with that thirteen six, or are you actually doing like uh, factoring in like uh, cap ex expenses, like, like roof and plumbing and stuff? How much of that have you factored into this deal? So, well, I'm pulling on my scope really quick. Uh, that's my scope of work. So about 10, 11 grand a door. Roll it out a little bit first. So about 10, 11 grand a door for interiors. And some of these quotes actually came in cheaper for like the exterior was like 33, whatever. So. But basically, call it 10, 11 grand a door for interiors, and then I'm gonna do the entire exterior. I'm gonna paint on the siding, do it two different colors, make it look brand new, put some new lights inside, like kind of give it a new pop, um, do the parking lots, and I just threw 75 grand in there for whatever. I mean, 
give or take, it could end up being 550 or 650. The, the fact is there's a lot of money on it. So if I go over a little bit, whatever, but like, this is like kind of what I, this is exactly what I gave to the bank. Yeah, so you get, you give each, each uh, unit 11 grand inside. Yeah. Cover that and then you do, and then you renovate. Yeah. To, yeah. To give it and a to touch on this in, in two seconds, cause I want to really focus on how you get value, but like there are companies that, so I have one company doing the entire project and they're turnkey everything and they do the entire thing for you. Literally, it's, it's, so the reason I like this more is because in multi, in, in single family, I'm like managing GC, it's a freaking nightmare. Like it, it is, it is literally brain damage. With this, there are companies and the management company will manage them for you. Like that one in downtown Raleigh, they, they did a 600K reno. I handled some of it because I like the exteriors, like vinyl siding and roof. I can call a roof for a vinyl siding, it's not that hard, but like all the interior stuff, they handled it. And they literally come in turnkey and they'll say, hey man, it's 11 grand a unit. We're gonna get all the material cabinets, We'll get the appliance, we'll, we'll manage the flooring, like, and they have their overhead built in, because they're getting it a lot cheaper. Like, how these companies have warehouses full of stuff. Huh? How do they do it that cheap? That is great. I mean, but I don't, I don't care. <laughs> uh, like, that's, that, because, well, honestly, like, they have a warehouse full of stuff, and they buy this, like, it's one's called Ironfish, it's a big company, and they literally are nationwide, and, like, they have a warehouse somewhere in North Carolina that they just have all this stuff, and, like, they're like, hey, if you use our SKUs, SKUs, which we stock, which is actually pretty decent stuff, we'll do it. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Like, yeah. So it's like, so it's honestly less brain damage. Like we've been, um, then the management company charges a 5% fee on top of this to turn it for you and handle and to manage them. Like they have a project manager in house, which is doing it. So it's like, worth I mean, I'm, I'm not going to spend that much time on this, to be honest. Like there's some work up front. Like we're going to, we're going to have a weekly call every week check in i'll you know go if i want like i don't really like it's not like so active like you can't even get those numbers doing doing your single family yeah for, i'll be honest i think the interiors will come in a little higher i think we got the quotes and they were close to like 13 but like whatever yeah you know what i mean like that's why i put it that's why i put a 700 grand in contingency even if it ends up being like 700 grand like 4.1 plus 700 here for 4.8 i honestly think here i can this is uh Chris, what are they doing at for per month percent or the over five well, percent of the total job so five percent of 600 grand so here here's like the spreadsheet that i sent to the bank it's a super simple spreadsheet and i can i can actually like put this in a link and send to everybody but this actually has it at 1400 i try to make it look super sexy for them um, and I put thirteen ninety five in there, but honestly, there are comps for thirteen ninety five. But like, all right, going back to your question, like cap rate and stuff like that. Um, let me start with. Oh yeah, forty four, forty four times fourteen hundred, right? These are your general expenses. It's not that it's not that crazy. You got taxes, insurance. You got a little bit of stuff for like dumpsters, trash, mowing the lawn has control. I mean, you're big. I really just kind of plugged repairs and maintenance. I don't think it'll be that high. Really, I kind of just plug numbers in here. This is like, this This is raw cost. Like the trash thing is literally 325 a month. The water is pretty much two, 300 bucks a month. So, but it's a, it's actually a little bit low on expenses because that's not added in, but I'm trying to show you big picture over here, right? Because you can play with this thing and it's like origami. It's like, it's just, all right, so let's just say 1300 bucks, right? If you buy it at a six cap at 1300 bucks, it's worth $8 million, right? When rates go down and things change again. It's say, let's say you wanna be super conservative and say it's a it's seven and a half cap, which is probably really good right now, you're six and a half, right? But this is the crazy thing about multifamily is if you go in here and say you just blow it out of the water, it's a beautiful property, good area. You get you get thirteen ninety five for this thing. For fourteen hundred. Like now you went from what was the number for six point whatever that to, to seven to seven million bucks. Just literally, you went from six point four to to eight. No, sorry to. Four to seven, seven million out. for for raise put another hundred dollars a month around there like it's it's crazy how much this the whole thing like scaled out so yeah really rookie question 
why is it more valuable than a lower cap rate? So, cap rates are return. Because um, someone is buying it at that lower number. So they're saying, hey, instead of, if I'm putting up, let's say a $100,000 house and getting it back 10 grand, which is a 10 cap, I'm gonna, I'll, I'm willing to do it for five cap, which is now five thousand dollars. So five cap be five grand. Does that make sense on a hundred grand? So it's basically just how they're. But to, to really, what you're asking is the NOI is five twenty seven. I mean, if you really like, like basically just take the NOI and divide it by the value of the property. So does that make sense? And cap rates kind of throw off, but the smaller it is. Basically, the less year they're getting, so it's worth more. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. Last question. What's the name of that company that you use? The management company. They'll manage the whole construction from start to finish, and then they'll take it over and manage the whole rental process. Uh, I'm using Trademark Residential. So they do it all from start to finish. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm using them, and I mean, no management company can be perfect, but they're really good. I would say that. I mean, I'll just be realistic. Like we have to. I gotta ride them. We have weekly, weekly meetings every week. We tweak stuff. Like, you're not just gonna step away and expect it to be perfect. No, that will, no. I'll clarify that. But it's they're the, 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 the separate GC and then you gotta manage. Your company. Yeah, and the, the point is like, hey, every week, hey, what's up with this? Can we ride the contractor? Like, you just have to, you just have to figure it out. But like, that helps a lot. Man. I gladly pay that five percent. This is brain damage, and you can go get another deal. Like, literally six hundred, whatever that is on six hundred grand. It's like. You know, if you had a project manager, that's what you'd probably pay him yeah. to do it, so just let them do it. I don't know. So, yeah. Okay. Do you find uh, difficulty accessing all the units? Uh, we got under a contract a week later, we went and walked all the floor plans and just spent like a couple hours there walking them. I don't really want to get, I don't really care to get in every single one as long as I know the floor. I just want to see a couple of each floor plan. Right, but I mean once you have it to clear them out to where you can get in, to where the tent. So, as soon as I get this, we're supposed to close next week, uh, we're going to give notice to probably maybe January, because obviously it'll be around Christmas time, it's kind of, uh, but like maybe January 30th. So, and we expect, you know, and then we'll see uh, what it looks like then. Like we have, there's 15 people in a lease until April. Which actually might work out good because I'll do the uh, dirty roughly, and then by that time I'll be ready to do the remaining fifteen that are at least till April. So, yeah, I mean, the most ideal thing is month to month. If you can get a whole like, uh, I'm buying a four, a, another property in like Fayetteville, which is around hundred units, and the entire thing is month to month, the entire hundred unit rent problem. So it's like. And a lot of it's like good rent, so you can go in there and you can like, day one, this thing is probably, you know, $1,200 rent, so I, there's probably 25% that are at 900 bucks. So you can, so like, it's, and this property's not that bad, so it's a different play, right? This is to get everybody out, because everybody's $600. It's a different business model, right? This, mo this model's empty it, redo it, refi it. That model over here, where it's like, you know, you're $200 off market, you just go in there and give them a hundred dollar, hundred fifty dollar rent bump, and like the people that are like 400 bucks, like they're probably not gonna be able to swallow the entire thing. And then maybe you focus on the bottom stuff and then keep the top and keep cash flow wise so you're not draining. Cause I'm literally making these mortgage payments on this stuff while it's vacant. But it's part of the business model, right? Like, hey, I'm gonna spend 600 on CapEx and I'm gonna spend 50 on holding costs, but I'll be able to refi it. So, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So the one in Durham that you bought, did you buy it in cash and then renovate and then go refinance or are you getting the loan for part of your acquisition. This one? Yeah. Uh, so they're giving me... So what you're getting it under, under contract and then, and then you're going to your banker. Or do you surprise them by? Yeah, so uh, town banks financing 75% and then once you rehab it, they'll give you... So like, and it was another like 400K release once I get it done. So like they go up to 80% of the as completed. So in this, the appraisal came in lower and they asked completely like five million. So they go 80% of five million, whatever that is, like four million bucks. And so that was town bank, you said? Yeah. Yeah, so you, I mean, you can get normal bank financing on it and they'll, re, they'll finance the rehab or you can get bridge debt. I'm getting bridge debt on one right now. It's a 0.8%. They just do it. It was like 90% of value. 
Like, they, and, and they'll fund 100% of rehab. So my point is, you don't need a bunch of money because there are lenders, you're gonna pay a little bit more interest rate, but let's just say your goal is to buy this thing, you're gonna pay 0.8%, 90%, you have 10% down, this is the 1.5 million dollar property, I had to put 150 into it, down, which is not bad to buy 40 units, it was 40 units in Spring Lake, um, and, and this company is financing 100% of the rehab. So, I mean, I have to, you have to have a little bit of working capital, but it's not like you have to have like $2 million, $3 million sitting around. You know, and you could probably get 150 k off of credit lines or borrow it, or, like that's not, it's workable. So yeah, 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 okay. All right, any other questions on that? So again, my intention was just to show everybody how to run through this stuff quickly. So now I'm gonna switch gears and go to warehouses. Cause I think warehouses are awesome, y'all. It's a freaking coupon clipper. So like, okay, this multifamily stuff, I'm telling you, like the multifamily stuff is work, right? You gotta buy, you gotta stabilize, you gotta turn on units, you gotta worry about vacancy. Like it's, there's a lot of thought, like mental, oh, like headaches that, I mean, it's not that bad. I'm just like this, right? Is a warehouse I bought in Greensboro. It's a, shit, I don't know, 40,000 square foot warehouse. I think it's 40,000. Uh, so I bought another warehouse. From, basically, I, we knew the seller and he called me and said, hey, you want to buy this? It's rented by, has anyone ever, ever heard of Ram Tool? Yeah. Has anyone ever heard of HD Supply? So HD Supply bought Ram Tool which I, did, no, I didn't care about this until I bought it, but like basically HG Supply is an $800 billion revenue company that now bought Ram Tool, which leases this warehouse, right? So think about, is that company gonna pay the rent? <laughs> it, you know what I mean? Like, are they gonna, are they gonna miss their rent payment? Probably not. So um, it's just an old building uh, and, and the, the guy had it, had it rented out to them um, they just store a bunch of stuff in there. You know, it's a triple net lease. Uh, they cover all the expenses on it. Uh, they actually repl replace, here you go. They replaced the HVACs in it a couple years ago. They replaced the HVAC, not the, not the actual owner. That's the owner right there, actually, when I was walking in. Uh, where's that showing? And this is the, they have some offices in the front, stuff like that. But basically, like, I bought it for 900 grand, and it brings in 9,800 a month. Okay, this is honestly easier than multifamily because it's just triple net, right? So they're gonna reimburse you for taxes and insurance at the end of the year and they're covering all the maintenance, right? So super simple stuff. If you wanna go in here, so somebody tell me what this is worth, right? Triple net lease on a warehouse like this, just call it a seven cap. It brings in 9,800 bucks a month, right? So somebody get, if there's no expenses, it means you have a 0% expense ratio. Uh, hmm. what is it worth? One point nine. Take ninety eight hundred dollars. One point six times twelve. One point six eight. Right. So take ninety. Yeah, take ninety eight hundred dollars times twelve, and divide it by point oh seven. Yeah. So it. Yeah. So it's a seven cap. I mean, right now it was probably more then, but like, so when he says he calls me, he says, hey. <coughs> Do you want to pay? Do you want to buy this for nine hundred grand? I said, shit, yeah, I'm on the way. You know what I mean? Because I looked at it on my phone. I'm like, he's nuts. And so I was like racing there. You see what I'm saying? So the goal is like, so you know quickly. And honestly, this is a forty thousand square foot warehouse. He said, I don't even know. Did I write down here? I don't know. He said like three dollars a foot. Like markets double that. Like I mean, I don't even know. It, like literally, if if because their their lease was written in a way because that's the one thing about these these you have to make sure the leases are like how they're written and really read it because they might be locked into a lease with no rent bumps for 15, 20 years or it might be next time you go around it brings it to market so like or I have another warehouse I'm looking at and literally the the lease just says market rent upon renewal so you can just go in there and say look man market rent is a lot. You want to pay it or not? And if they don't, <laughs> bit dead serious. They're out. This lease said it's based upon some something I can't remember what it's called in uh, some live or not. It's like what a little, I don't know. Whatever. De not so for it was like uh, anyway. So and basically just kind of goes up with the economy. So, but I mean, still like right, it praised. You're good, and you just cash flow. 
So the payment's 4700 bucks a month on 9800 so the cash flow is four grand a month. They literally deposit them the 28th, and I don't do anything. They cover it all. Do you see why? So multifamily is good, but I'm telling you, warehouses, if you can find some good deals on warehouses, and you can market for them, they're freaking coupon clippers. You don't have to do anything. So really, and, and I'd say the market on this thing is probably, 50, I don't even know, just say 15, 20 grand a month. So if, if their lease wasn't set up like that, it was a market lease, let's say you brought them to 20 grand a month, triple net with a $4,700 payment. That's just stupid. I mean, you know, but like, I mean, so there's options to it. This is another one. All right, so I'm gonna have y'all tell me what this is worth, right? It is a 12,000 square foot warehouse in Durham. It's actually the same seller. He, he called and said, hey, I want 750 for this. So let me see how excited y'all get. And it, it, it's going, market rent is $12 a square foot. So we're gonna take 12,000 times $12 a square foot. It's 144 grand a year at a seven cap. He said he wants 750. This, so I was like, I'm on the way, let's go. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, so it's like when you're coming across stuff, because I think what happens is you don't know, people can spend hours and days, like you, like, uh, you get analysis paralysis. My goal is to be able to like, boom, it's deal. You see what I'm saying? Just be able to like trigger, because like you just gotta be able to do it quickly. But so this thing, that's why you're selling it cheap, right? The lease on this is 4,700 bucks a month. My payment's like 2,600. And it's, if anyone know who Trosa is, it's like a nonprofit. Yeah. They lease it and their lease is like another five year extension. If they wanna take it at mark at, at a 3% increase, they can take it. So they're in it like 5,300 if they want to upon extension. So that's part of the reason it was cheap. Er, but I'm trying to get them out of it and I could probably pay an attorney to like argue it and get out of it. Or I honestly just ask them like, hey, I want to use this for my personal storage. Can you guys cancel your lease? And I'm trying to just get them to like do it amicably because I want to bring it to market. But here, here's also the thing about this is warehouses. The guy had a broker call me. He's like, hey man, I have guys who are willing to ride this lease out and they'll sit on it for five years, no cash flow because they want to have a 1031 over here. They're about to pay half a million dollars in taxes. They'll just still buy it from you for like 1.6 and just sit on it for five years because they don't want to pay taxes. So they don't give it, they don't care. So it's like, even though you're locked into a lease, you can still do stuff with it, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm just trying to like put these nuggets out there. Cause like some of y'all could be marketing for this stuff. And like if you're a wholesaler, you could be like, we're pulling a list of warehouses. We pull Wake County and Durham. Um, and we're just cold calling them all and talking to them. Hey, what do you want? Hey, what do you want? Throw our numbers out, throw our numbers out. And like, literally you could just be marketing for it just like this stuff. Um, I don't know if I, cause like, I had another guy, we're buying a warehouse in Nightdale. He called, we cold called, it was almost the exact same thing, right? He said it's 12,000 square feet. Uh, and he wanted, we called him and he said 1.3. We're like 1.3 Nightdale Boulevard. It's like a few miles from downtown. We're like, and we did the math. I'm like market rents $12 square foot. It's like almost the exact same numbers, right? It's 2 million bucks. Like he wants 1.3. Like, yeah, let's do it. We love, we put it in our contract. I didn't see the property. We just put it in our contract. And uh, there's earnest money on there. And I hadn't seen it, but like in the next day, he got an offer 50K higher and 100 grand higher. So I'm trying to show you like, if you hesitate, you could lose that deal. So it's like being able to know how to do it quickly is my, is my like intention with that. You right. Yeah. Because some of these, like the one where you had a nonprofit, you can't raise the rents right away and refi out. So how are you funding it? So it appraised for eight, 10, and I just did 70, I just did 25% down. So you just, you're just paying for yourself, you're not bringing on investors and syndicate. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I mean, <coughs> you could. Yeah, because honestly, you could, you could probably sell it as is on the market for with, with that lease in the place, is what I'm saying, for called a million and a half. So I think if you bring in an investor, say, hey, I'll give you 30% of this deal. Do you want 30% of the upside, which is call it 500 grand or something, or 700, like, hey, they're gonna make, they're gonna make right. you know what I mean? I know if you call a lot of people, with, like, so you can do it the money. Is that? No, I'm just, I, like, for some reason, whenever I'm underwriting these, like, I'm actually doing value ads, I cannot make them work unless I can add value pretty quickly. So I'm just trying to think through, like, what is different about underwriting. So, 
people, there's not a lot of warehouses on the market. People are willing to pay future value now. I, I, I called a broker, like I had a couple brokers call me on this. I'm like, dude, I don't want to sell it. Like, what am I going to get for with the lease? He's like, no, I can get you what it's worth right now, right, right, right now. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, I mean, I'm like, you might, might give it a 10 or 15% discount, but I can get you pretty much because people are willing to wait for it. This is a unique thing to where there's really not a lot of it. So like there's guys who literally own like a fabric company and they just need a place to put everything, but they can't find anything. If you go and live there, uh, CoStar and look for this stuff, there's not a value. There's Oh, uh, there's nothing. And it's crap if it is, and it's like super high. So that's why it's like, I mean, you could probably bring somebody on and just like be a partner or, even if it is a decent deal, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So what questions do you got? Yeah. Uh, when you do these contracts real quick like that, what's the escape on your due diligence? So you won't get stuck with some kind of environmental problem? Uh, 45 day, 45 days uh, inspection. Like on this, we did a 45 day inspection period and 75 day close. So the inspection period, obviously, I can back out during any time. So if you want, you just back out. If you don't want. I mean, I have earnest money, and I just send them a termination, and they release the earnest money. I, you know, in this, I think in that one, I did give them ten grand hard because I knew it was a deal, and I went and drove it, and I went there that night, and I was like, yeah, this is a good deal. I'm gonna, because he wanted hard money, so I did put a little bit. But like, we have another one of our contract and carry that we didn't. We have sixty days with no money hard for 60 days. So now we're like doing all the research on it and we're trying to figure it out. What kind of, what kind of issues would, would cancel that deal if they want it out? Uh, I'm doing an inspection right now and, he, and the guy already told me the stuff has got problems and I'll probably have to get it fixed. So, I mean, on, on this certain situation, it's a warehouse, it's a metal box on concrete. So <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I mean, the only real thing they're inspect is the well and septic. I mean, I'm, you might, I might get a survey, I probably won't because it's I got a really big. They have title problems and stuff like that. Oh yeah, I mean that's two seconds. You can send that to an attorney and you can find that out pretty quickly. Okay. That's not a big deal. Like I'm, I'm more worried about like the actual. You know, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like the bigger things. Yeah. Honestly, I don't even really care about the roof leak. Like, the whole thing could be falling in, but if you're buying a two million dollar thing for one point three, shit, I'll replace the entire. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Like. When you're buying at a discount, like, if, what's the entire roof on a warehouse gonna cost? Like 50 maybe? Like, okay, cool. Like it was built into it. And I mean, you have 45 days during that period of time. Like, so now the septic's bad. I'm finding that out. And, I'm, and it actually, it's a trucking company that's in there. And there was some oil and some cans behind the property. And I'm like, shit, like those things, there's literally oil sitting on the ground. I'm like, I'm gonna get, so I'm getting a, uh, an oil test on the well to make sure there's not contaminated oil in the well. Cause I flipped houses where the wells were contaminated and it was, it's, it's a freaking nightmare. So, you know, I mean, unfortunately I've learned that the hard way. Like, so as far as due diligence, I mean, that's, but I mean, on a, on a warehouse, it's a freaking box. So you put money down for due diligence and earnest money. So ideally, like this warehouse, this thing in carry, we did 60 days inspection period. And it was like 20 K in earnest money. So I had to wire 20,000 to the attorney, which is being held, but on the 59th day, I can just send a termination and get that back. It doesn't go hard until 60 or 61 or whatever. So yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So what I'm saying is, hey, it seems like a good deal. Let's just put her a contract and then figure it out. I'm, I mean, I know how it sounds, but like, you don't know until you get in there. Like I, we have an office building in a contract and carry and we buy it for two million, and the lease right now is only eight thousand dollars, and it's not even the, the mortgage payment is going to be twelve eleven thousand because it's one third of market rent. So we're going back and talking with them, and be like, because the company is like some big pharmaceutical company. Hey, we're going to go ahead and sign a new lease now at like whatever market is like twenty or something, and the only way we can buy this is if we get this because we can't even get debt on it if we don't. So you would have saying now we're under contract, now you're figuring out. And they're like, no problem, we'll pay market rent. They want to stay in the building. They just want to get rid of their books, and and then we're, we're working it out. So I'm trying to say you don't have to have it all figured out. Just jump. It's fun. <laughs> well, so the difference between that and residential, 
is that you're not going to lose the money, right? That's what Steve Harvey said. <laughs> so, Chris, you're yeah. figuring yeah. everything yeah. out yeah. in that inspection clause. And, yeah. Well, it's the same with residential. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have time to figure it out. A lot of times with residential, you've got, I mean, you, some of these people don't want money hard. Yeah. And, like, I don't know, when you look at the numbers, like, we were at a town this weekend, and somebody sent me a $503,000 house, they wanted 364 I looked at the picture, and I'm like, this is no more than a $70,000 rehab. And I gave them $2,000 earnest money. Because that's what they wanted, that's the only way. And I'm like, shit, at the end of the day, what's the biggest risk? It's $2,000, and maybe it needs 90, it's still a deal. What I'm saying is, take some risk, and it's like, what's your worst downside? Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's the worst thing that's gonna happen? I might lose two grand, but I have the opportunity to make Hundred or whatever, and, and like the pictures don't look that bad. It's probably not going to be any more than that. You see what I'm saying? Just get in there and see because things don't last. Anything decent? You call how many times you talk to a seller? He's a whole, like, and then a couple days later you call him and it's gone. Or a wholesaler's got a deal, you call him. And think, things might have changed a little bit in the last couple months, but the stuff still happens. Yeah. If someone's got a good deal, even in this market, it's gone in two seconds. So you, like, what I'm, my point is, is like, <coughs> figure it out how to do it and, and evaluate it quickly to where it's not gone. You just call them and lock it up quickly. I mean, you might have a little risk, but like, you got time to figure it out. If it's, not, if it's not a deal, you back out. I mean, it was two grand, but like, you have the opportunity to make a hundred. So would you create your, your flipping business to be, to enable you to do the commercial and the, the apartments? I mean, the flipping income. You can do it without money. I mean, you could, dude, if you bring somebody a deal that, hey man, I got a, what are we looking at right now? This deal, hey, I got a deal in Durham, right? 4.1 million, it's gonna be worth 7 million bucks when it's done. Will you let me borrow the down payment? I'll give you 30% of the deal. And the upside's a million and a half dollars. What's 30% of a million and a half? Like, you know what I mean? Are they gonna, you probably gonna find the money? You see what I'm saying? Like, if you've got a decent deal, like, somebody's gonna land on it. I guarantee there's someone in this room that will give me the money for it. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, cause that, that's what, like, the bigger people do, they syndicate it and they're giving away, like, a third of the pie. Right. So, I mean, that's what a lot of people, and they'll give away, you know, there's that, you know, there's splits like 70, 30 and all that stuff. And they give away a lot of it on like 20, 30 million dollars. Right. Yeah. I mean, they're giving away, but they're still making a huge pie because like they're buying a property for 20 million, putting two, three into it and selling it for 30. So instead of making seven, they're making like four, but you know, yeah. So what else do you want to hear more about? Like multifamily or warehouses or just, do you have general questions? I mean, I have a, yeah. Do I see it in multifamily or even warehouse? Are you looking at any new building, new construction right now, or are you mostly just doing acquisition? I don't like new construction. Dude, the timelines are too long. I'm not a builder. I just stay in my lane. I don't know how to build. I mean, I would love to partner with a builder who knows how to build, but I think multifamily commercial, like you're going, if you're gonna build something, you gotta build like 100 units or more. Your 15, 20 million dollar build, and the way rates are right now, like I have a 50 unit in downtown Raleigh that we're in the middle of lease out on, and I took I've taken the rents now from like 1650, I leased like the first like 10, and now I'm slashing to 1450 because I have 28 two beds I have to lease out by, and I'm gonna raise them back January, but that was a hard time of the year. So why well, I'm telling you that because. Basically, they're proforming their rents two, three years down the road, which, you know, if you got a $20 million spread, you know, but like, but also they're gonna buy it, they're gonna stabilize it for a couple of years, they're gonna show, for, you know, it's just different. Dude. Yeah, so construction's good. People, I wanna do construction, they make a lot of freaking money in construction. The Sky House in downtown Raleigh was built for 60 million, built, and they sold it for 100 million. I mean, it's stupid. That, this was a long time ago. But even then, like that was, gosh, like 10, 15 years ago. Like, I don't know what it's worth now. I'm just saying like new construction is a lot of money. Yeah, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Chris, on your, on your rehab deals, um, your rehab and stuff, and you've got, you were talking before, the last, last meeting, you've got set pricing to do, <coughs> do stuff, like whether it's like backsplashes or flooring. But what are your, uh, are you having you're having 1099 guys do it? So contractors do that stuff. And yeah. Going into so you don't have you don't you don't have a GC that looks over all that. You've got all the subs that go in to do all the stuff. Like what are your set numbers for like uh, 
for doing some of that stuff. He said, instead of doing like, like the hourly I mean, stuff, I I've, got, I've got like, my construction crews on like hourly stuff. And they're like, so I don't like hourly years. because no one's motivated by hourly. Right. Where's the motivation? I mean, I'm trying to give them time, timeline bonuses for houses. Dude. And it's like, I'm still pulling my head. So I, I, I'm literally scared about it. Because why the hell is someone gonna do the job that uh, rewire a house? Because I had this one electrician, he built, he was really cheap, but he billed me hourly for like a month or two. And I was like, sir, by the time I looked at it, he was like more expensive than it would be just to pay somebody a flat rate. So I, so I have a set price list where the guys are just doing like fifty dollars a light, a uh, lighter, you know, set, set, set. I can just, I can email it to everybody, but it's like the entire thing will be, you know, hundred dollar, hundred for this, hundred fifty for appliances. But they're gonna make the same amount of money. Whether you do it in three days or, or like 30 days. Because, like, literally, like, I have one guy, I literally have a couple guys that, you love one guy that does the same exact house in three days with a freaking machine and he just rolls, and the other guy takes like a week and a half, two weeks. You know what I mean? I, I have a lot of, like, I'm just, I accept it and I know that when I give it to him, but like, I, cause I understand the guy's bandwidth, but like, he's get, they're getting paid the same amount of money, regardless. So, and uh, I just prefer that because it's like motivation. No, because I believe in like commission, right? Sales, right? The harder you work, the more money you get. The harder these guys work, the more money they get. If he can do, instead of now three houses a month, if he could do five houses a month, he just made an extra, what, like, three to six grand a house? So you've, got, you've got square foot numbers for like uh, tax plus tile and LVP and stuff. Uh, for, for flooring, yeah. yeah. But um, like backsplash, usually like three to five hundred bucks. Yeah, stuff like that. Or like a uh, light fixture is like 25. But he's doing 10 or 15, which is $500. You see what I'm there? So it's not like it's just, he, 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 he's not coming out there for 25 bucks. He's coming out there to do the entire house. You see what I'm saying? And I can send you the price list. Yeah. So in our current market right now, if you're entering, if you're entering this business, where are you focusing on? What do you want to focus on? Well, I mean, like, I'm assuming that Initially, you were doing house flipping, and then it builds up to where you currently are. Someone could jump right in and do this stuff right off the bat if they wanted to. They don't have to, like, so you don't have to have money to do this. Okay. You literally can borrow all of it. Right. If you came across a deal, I'm sure someone in this room, hey man, there's a million dollar upside in this deal. You want 30% of the million dollar upside? And you give them part of the deal and you handle it and figure it out and do it, I'm sure somebody will do it. I, you could literally put it online into any Facebook group and find an investor, bro. So I don't, I mean, you can still, yeah, I mean, I, I, my path was I flipped houses, had money, bought other stuff, but yeah. you can literally have zero. There's guys that like, I'm in a multifamily uh, mastermind group. Mm -hmm. There's kids in there like 20 years old, they don't have any money. They're freaking broke. They're shooting gain like 150 units. They, don't, they literally have like no money in the deal. They have investors that are bringing all like a couple million bucks and they're putting the entire thing together. They're organizing, they're doing all the work, but they have no money. 20, like 21. The, the kid can't even freaking drink yet. He's buying 150. <laughs> I'm serious. So like, if that's not like a wake up call, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he just puts it together. So what I'm saying is if you find the deal, the money will come. It really, I mean, it's so like cliche, but it's true. So what's the family mastermind that you're... Uh, it's called Legacy. There's a bunch of them. Uh, Rod Khalif is one. Uh, Legacy. There's like multi-family network. There's a bunch. Yeah. You got the Donis brothers that you're talking about? Yeah, they're in Rod Khalif. Or no. Legacy. They're in uh, multi-family. There's some... Uh, uh, Javier. Yeah. Ter Javier's. There's actually a multi-family meetup in Raleigh. Uh, if you want to go to one, Javier, if you know who has one, yeah. and he like there's a me up once a month, and they have it. So yeah. All right. So last thing, I'm gonna just I don't know how much more time I have, but I'm just gonna knock this out quickly. Basically, cost eggs. So so how did I get rid of the tax bill? Basically, bought a bunch of stuff and just cost segged it. I mean, it's not magic, literally. And what you can do is sell that cost egg to somebody that needs the depreciation. So you can sell that and be like, hey, dude, you're gonna get $100 more write up, I'll sell it to you for 70 grand. Mm, Separate. Yeah. So you can actually sell that. But like, basically, you can get, I don't wanna get complicated with it, but like 10% of the value of the property. So, what do we buy? So, bought, in a big picture, it was 
80 units and it was all in for 7 million bucks and it saved 700,000 in taxes year one. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or you can buy 300, so also had a port, like let's just say you buy a $300,000 house, that's a $30,000 tax saving year one. I literally had a friend who was about to pay like 85 grand in taxes. I'm like, bro, why are you, what are you talking about? You get rentals, don't you? He's like, yeah, I'm like 16. You ever cost that them? No, I haven't. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, go. And he went and did it. It has zero tax bill. Like, he just, so, I mean, there's probably some people in this room right now that have rentals that might have never done that. Even if it's 100 or 200 grand, like, it's still money free that you're just going to hand to the government. Like, go and, like, go do a cost seg. They're like 400 bucks. You can do it online. Um, and, and, like, that's literally free money. Just hand it to you. And I mean, like I'm backdating stuff. So here's, and here's what's about to happen, right? In 2023, cost segs are, they're only gonna give you 80% of the value of that. So I have a bunch of stuff in the pipeline. I'm freaking out right now to close by the end of this year, because let's say I was gonna get a $2 million write off. Now I'm only gonna get 1.6 because they're gonna go to 80% of the value and they're, they're trimming that down over time. So 80% is still good, but I'm just saying like, Take advantage of this because the law is changing. It's going down a little bit with the new people in office. Hopefully it'll change. But um, but yeah, I mean, this is just an example of it, but I don't know, one of them was 150 the first year. So like I went from crying <coughs> to literally joyous excited. <laughs> like literally I was at the house and Stephanie, this is my girlfriend Stephanie. She walks, I'm like, it's like looking at my life. I'm like, yes, yes. What's going on? She's like, I'm not paying anything in taxes this year. Yes. Like, it was fucking awesome. Sorry. Like, uh, that's how I, I, like, who wants to pay taxes? Yeah, I bet on video. Who wants to pay anything? <laughs> it's literally the stupidest thing ever. So, that that's what I get excited about. Um, yeah, and that's my information. <laughs> we got a little bit. <laughs> we got a little Chris Pano in here. I look at it every day, it says, don't be a little bitch. <laughs> right? So it's like, there, and the reason I say that, yes, it's funny, but like, I think a lot of people, they get like scared of stuff. Right? Like, just try it, just figure it out. Put it under contract. If you don't buy it, back out of it. What I'm saying is at least good to try and get into a few and figure it out instead of being scared and stuck in your own head and not doing anything for five fucking years and before you know it, like nothing's happened. That's what a lot of people do. And they just get scared and don't do anything. So I'm saying is like, because the reason that my main focus and intention was valuation is so people know that, hey, I'm onto something quickly and can lock it up if it's a good deal. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what I'm saying is don't be low, like, don't be, what, I'm, what I mean by that, my core meaning is, forget, if you think it's a good deal, lock it up and don't be scared and just do it. So, yeah, what other question? Yeah. Your focus now, commercial and are you, are you totally on residential? Residential is changed. Uh, yeah, I'm still flipping houses, but they have to discounts. I got about 20 houses in the market right now that I haven't sold. I'm doing price drops on, and it's it, I, I, I'm literally just kind of discounting and we're pulling. I mean, it's it's different, man. So focus has to be. Dude, I mean, <laughs> like my goals, I want to you know is to after you do a couple of these, 10, 20k a month, like residual after they're renovated, like that. Hopefully it'll equal one day what flipping is, and I don't have to like lose hair and try and get a hair transplant because I'm all bald. You know, what I'm like it's just a lot of brain damage. I, and I, I did it for a short period of time, and I, you know, I just feel like it's got to cycle. So everyone, yeah. Let's take one more question, and we're gonna open up for networking. Who are the top two brokers you would go to to get the highest price when you're selling a commercial asset? Depends on what kind of asset, but one. a retail strip and cream. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, just Google retail. I mean, there's only like five. Can you 